Hello and welcome to the fifth lesson in this video series on how we can create a TK Enter GUI to interface with our Arduino. In this video, we're going to add a message box that will alert the user when they inputted an error. In this case, we're going to check to see if the user inputted a valid integer. So remember, an integer is just a whole number, so it can't have a decimal, and obviously it can't have letters or any kind of other characters. So if the user enters, for example, 5.6, and then hits turn on, then you'll get an error. And it says, please enter a valid integer. So adding this message box will not only prevent errors from happening within your code, but then we'll let the user know when they've input a proper value. Now let's go ahead and look at the Python code. In line four, I added the line from TK import message box. So that allows us to use all the message box functionality. Let's move to the updates in the blink LED function. Because this is the function that will confirm the blink state, whether the box is checked or not, and then we'll determine the entry value that was entered by the user in num blinks. What we want to do is once we assign numblinks to entry blink dot get we want to check that value right after that so that's why I created the variable user input valid user input valid is going to be a boolean type so it's either going to be true or false to get the boolean state I created another function called user data check and what we do is we get the entry value from entry blink dot get assign that to numblinks and numblinks is the input parameter to user data check. So that will be called and then user input valid is then assigned to whether it's true or false. If user input valid is true, then we go ahead and write the formatted string to the Arduino. And if it's false, we'll show a message box that displays the error alerting the user a valid integer was not inputted. So let's take a closer look at the user data check function, which is new code on line 31. Here we can see it takes in the user's input and then executes a try and accept statement. The purpose of this function is to evaluate whether an exception is going to be raised. And in this case, an exception will be raised if the user input is not an integer. We do this by executing line 32 in the try statement. In this case, using this syntax, we're not converting a value to an integer. We're trying to see if the integer function will raise an exception. And the exception gets raised if the user input is not an integer. If it is an integer, we go ahead and return true. And if it's not an integer, then we go ahead and hit the accept statement. So for example, if the user inputted 5.5, we go to the accept line. Because in this case, an exception would be raised. Then we use message box dot show error. And then that takes in a few parameters. First is going to be the title of the message box, which in our case will be error. Then we put the string that occurs in the center of the box. So we want to alert the user to please enter a valid integer. And then here I explicitly called out icon equals error, which will be the image that will appear when the message box pops up. We'll go into a little more details about this depending on your operating system. We get different results, but let's bookmark that and come back to it later. Overall, adding this try accept statement, which looks for exceptions, allows us to alert the user when there is an error and avoids our programs from just flat out crashing. In many cases, if the user inputs something that isn't valid, it could cause a total crash in your program and that's a big bummer. So if we have these try accept statements, we can override that crashing and contain the error and explain to the person that they need to update their values so we don't have to have a full on catastrophic error. I noted before that depending on your operating system, you might get a different look and feel for the message box. And here are the results of that. On the left, we have the Mac OS and on the right, we have the Microsoft Windows. We have to keep in mind that all this code interacts with an underlying operating system. And that operating system has its own defaults, values, and look and feel. 
I say for the purposes of this video and the functionality we want to enable for our user, both cases work for the Mac OS and the Microsoft Windows because we serve our purpose of providing an error message to the user. The details within the box might vary a bit, but the overall requirement to show the user error is satisfied with both. One potential solution to make your GUI more consistent is to actually update the message box pi file. And we can see here from the functionality here, and the reason why I kept that icon input parameter is just to make you aware that if you look at the source code, it even calls out that you can do overriding on it. And of course, the great thing about Python is it's open source. And we could see here, if you'd like to have your own solution to add a custom image, which you can certainly do, you just have to either modify this source file or override in the Python file itself. Thank you for watching this video on how you can add more functionality to your TK Entry GUI to alert the user when they've inputted an error. Thanks again, and stay tuned for more content.